Nothing new, but it definitely the summer running is directly related to it. Really? Okay. Here we go. I'm not gonna fly to it, but have an angle, actually let me, uh, back a second. I said, might have heard me or not, that you're kind of going backwards of what, what we did over here. Is it kind of backwards of that? Can someone explain what I mean by that? You're doing the opposite of what you did before. So, uh, opposite of what? And instead of, like, going, kind of, like, 30 degrees to the same angle. Yeah, because before you're you have a degree and you're trying to find the sign yeah. of that degree, and now since you have the sign, now you're trying to find the end of the degree of that sign. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why that's the opposite of what we do. And that's what we call an inverse function. Okay? A function, what is a function? What makes a function a function? Something you get out of something? Yes. And and uh, for each input, right. what's in the 
begin busying up, and then when you're busy you get the problem out. Okay? So this is a function, right? This is the sine function, this is the cosine function, this is the tangent function, right? By specific number of functions. But we can change this to anything we want, the sine of 30, sine of 45, sine of 50, sine of whatever we want. Right? Okay. So we put in the angle and we look for the sine, and as Tyler explained, uh, now we look at the sine and then say what the angle is. So reverse. I input what happened to this function uh, and I get out what? Um, I just got a question. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's on a long line or something like that, but that, uh, you're trying to find the one half, but uh, what if there's more than multiple of uh, more than one ha uh, half of a function? That's a great question, and that's exactly what we need to address. Yeah, because there's no, 30, uh, there was uh, 150, yeah. and 330. 330? Look at 330 again. Uh, Why not 330? Negative, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, so, so, yeah, specifically for positive one half. So it's only the opposite, it's only the So there's two. But also, what you're talking about, and I'll, well, let me talk about it really quickly and then come back to it in just a minute. But uh, 30 degrees, one half sine. 150, sine of one half. What about 390 degrees? What does that mean? Over 360, 390 would be 31 degrees. Hey, look, another angle on the sine of one half. Right? What about uh, 420 degrees? No, 510 degrees. So we have to do something about this function because as it is, it's not a function because why? It may be more than one. More than one answer, more than one output. Yeah. Okay. So first let's just talk about what this function is called. Uh, this function is called the inverse sine function. Okay, so when you see this, it doesn't mean one over sine, like a lot of people think that it does, because we have an unfortunate notation problem. Uh, the inverse sine means just what it's saying. Find an angle that has a sine of one half. That would be the same. So find an angle that has a cosine of the square root of two over two. That's the inverse cosine of root two over two. Find an angle that has a cosine of root two over two. This guy, inverse tangent of the square root of three. Find an angle that has a tangent of square root of three. So this just means go the opposite way. Go find the tangent, go find the sine, go find the cosine. You can even be seeking cosecant and cotangent for you. Uh, so, go find that sine of that cosine of that tangent, and then say what the angle is, which is the opposite of what we did. Okay. So now we have to address that problem which we brought up. If you just ask me this, find an angle that has a sine of one half, well now I can find all points on multiple elements. So, like infinite? So there are, right now, infinite, an infinite number of outputs, which is not okay. That's not the way functions work. Functions so when we, when we go backwards, like if we go sine of 30, well, it's 30 and we have one sine. But an angle that has a sine of one half, so we get it kind of fixed. And really the way we're going to fix it is just say, you know all those other answers you can get? Well, just don't get those answers. Only get this one answer. Does that make sense? We just say it. We're just like all of math don't agree. Only get this answer when I say inverse sine. Or we get this answer when I say inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2. So we're going to look at where those answers come from. And, why. Right? and what we're about to talk about is we're going to explain, like, you look at the first page of 13.4, and it'll have this box, and it'll have all these unit circles with shaded areas, and what we're about to talk about is explaining all that. Okay. So, you guys are just like rock stars, and I've already addressed that I wanted to bring up. So let's talk about that again. Inverse sine of, let's say, root 3 over 2. Where can we find a uh, sine of root 3 over 2? Circle, where can we find that? 25. No. 
60. Where else? Uh, 120. And any other angle that is coterminal with those. Okay. There's only two of them like that are written down in your unit cycle. Okay. There's only be two. Uh, but any other angle that if you go all the way around, like kind of put my unit circle here. Uh, here is a sine of root 3 over 2. Here's a sine of root 3 over 2. If you go all the way around 360 and add another 60, so we're at 420 degrees. That also has a sine of root 3 over 2. If you go around 360 degrees and add another 120, then we have a sine of root 3 over 2. So this is what we're going to say now. We'll only get the answer, in this case, we're only going to get the answer of 60 degrees. That'll be the only answer. That'll be the only output for that. You know, plugging root 3 over 2 into the inverse sine function. Okay. So, that's the, the reason for this shaded in unit circle in the book. It has this shaded in, it also has this shaded in. And the reason why is, is, is partly we want to get you know, all the values that could possibly plugged into that, we wanted to have answers, we wanted to add output. Also, we um, just like those answers. Okay? They're, they're nice for something. Okay. So let's talk about why they're nice. And why someone, or probably some group of people, chose at some point to say, well, the outputs for this function are going to come from here. Okay? 0 to 90. Between 0 and 90, what kind of sign values are there? All of these sign values. Yeah, all positive. They're all about the x-axis, they're all positive, you know, the y part of the coordinate is the sign, and so we have all positive signs. So whatever we put into this function, the inverse sine function, is positive, then we'll get an angle from 0 to 90. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay? Now, let me ask you, well, this, if we're all agreed, 60 degrees, that's it. That's the only one that we're going to use as the output uh, there. So all of your outputs for positive sign values are going to come from zero to 90. What about, this, this is kind of a trick, so I want to see if anybody, uh, or sorry, negative. absolutely makes sense, not that it you know, didn't work. It's just that instead of going from 0 and then to 270 and then using these angles, we're going to go from 0 to 90, and if we just continue in this direction, we're going down to negative 90. So the inverse sign of negative 2 or 2 is negative 45. So the idea here is all of our answers will come from like this nice continuous list, no gaps. Does that make sense? They're kind of making that, uh, like, just to have a um, protractor again, so and you choose something. Uh, you're not, like, going a whole 360. Yeah. And they've got the top 80 in that, and stuff, you're just making that half, uh, and just circle. Yeah, just, like, half a circle, and that half a circle is, like, all, yeah, top side of yeah. it is positive and bottom side is uh, ne negative, mm -hmm. but it's still just 180. Yeah, it's okay. just a continuous 180 degree. If we... Let's, let's think of it this way. If I, if I told you where to get your answers, and I went from 0 to 90, and then from 270 to 360, I had to say that I'm going to the answer. We'll come from 0 to 90. And then, we'll pick back up. We'll start at 270, and we'll go to 360. See what I'm saying there? Our outputs. We're saying, If I put something in for the inverse sine, what I'm going to get is some 
So if we say that the inverse sine of negative root 2 over 2 is 315 degrees, that means that we, we looked at these angles and said, no, none of these angles have a sine of negative root 2 over 2. And we skip this big open space of nothingness where no answers will ever come from. And then we back up to 270 and came around to 315 and said, there you go. That, that happens to be a sine of negative root 2 over 2. We go from negative 90 to 90 just so that our answers come from one nice continuous list with no gaps in there. So instead of from 0 to 90 and from 270 to 360, we'll go from negative 90 to positive 90. Okay. That's where all of our answers or our outputs will come from. And that's what you call All, all of the outputs, that list of outputs. No, not that yet. Starts with an R. The set of all of the outputs. The range. Right, domain and range. The range is all the outputs, the domain is all of the inputs. says find a sign or find an angle that has this sign. And then we've said because there's so many angles that have the same sign as each other, we're going to say let's only agree on the answer that comes from negative 90 to negative. And that way we won't get multiple options. Yeah. Um, so now let's see let's just evaluate another one. The inverse sine of the square root of 2 over 2. See if we can evaluate that. Negative one inverse sine of negative uh, root four. We've got a lot of choices here. Let's say negative one. Zero, yeah, that's too high. But the sign still, this is the sign. Three sixty. Nope. If two angles like land in the same place, they have the same sign to One eighty, nope, the sign is zero. Ninety, the sign is one. Three sixty plus ninety? Nope. Because like they're all going to be equal to the same, even if you uh, get like in the four, uh, 400 degree, 360, yeah. whatever, it's always going to be equal to the same, it's always going to be the same sin. So, it's, uh, it's impossible. It's impossible. So, you're trying to make it work, you're saying maybe uh, 90 has a sign of 1, so maybe people all the way around have a sign of 2, but 
who decided to go seven tangent there are just ratios of like the vertical to the horizontal or the radius to the vertical. Like these, ra these, these ratios will be the same even if we go round and round and round forever. Once we stop, we just sit there, here's your sign that up. So yeah, it's not possible because the biggest sign that you can find is what? So the biggest sign one. that you can find one. The inverse sine of one would be 90, but the inverse sine of two just so you can say it's undefined. There's no way for an angle to have uh, that ratio of the sun. Like the problem that we get to 60, and you can find 10 or find that, and you can have a problem that there's multiple the same thing. Kind of, just that there is no. sign is that all of these all these signs up here are positive signs. Yeah. Which means like if we only took our answers from here, if I put a negative in there, like the inverse sign of negative root two over two, there are negative. no angles that have a sign of negative root two over two. We have to go down here to find yeah. some angles that have a negative sign. Okay. So it's all in but for other for other functions that, that may happen. But for the inverse sign, this is it. These are the two quadrants we'll, we'll find our answer from. Negative 19, 90, always, always, always. Mm -hmm. Right? Could it flip over on the other side? It could. Like, that would work. But, so let's, let's pretend like we're the first two people to ever have this discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to try and convince you that this is just nice. Okay? Uh, you say, we could find all the signs here and here. You're right. Like, those, that could be where I am. But don't you think this is nicer because these angles are well, smaller, 0 to 90? Yeah, yeah, 90 and for over yeah. here, we're like 90, 90 to 180. Yeah. And like from 90 to 270, I don't know, it's just kind of funny. Like if we could have 0 in there, we like 0. We like, I mean, here's a, a, like another case for this being maybe nicer. 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. These are angles that we're more familiar with. Yeah, you're always trying to find a uh, simplified answer, and so if you have it on the other side, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to simplify it down anyway to get in to get it down to the actual number for one to have it on the other side. Well, I mean, we, whoever had the discussion and decided that these are the angles we're gonna use, they could have said, well, the inverse sine of square root of three over two is one twenty. That angle has a sine of root three over two, so why not? And the, the why not that I'm kind of making up. 60 is just more familiar, more familiar with 60. So the choice between 60 and 120 or some other crazy angle, I'll just choose 60. I think that, that's nice. We like the first quadrant of graphs as well. So positive, positive, that's, that's nice. We yeah. like to be in that place. So uh, could you go from here to there? Absolutely. That would make sense. It would get all the positive signs and the negative signs, and it would give us multiple answers. But it's just, it just easier. Yeah, it just makes like a little bit more sense to it. Uh, the average of the so you could do it for 90 mm -hmm. But I like your point, but like, if you're thinking about it, so that works too, why, why that? And that's, that's kind of why. Or at least the story I made up about that. Alright, so now we've talked about the inverse sign. Hopefully we feel comfortable with the value of the inverse sign. That's the inverse sign of, well, what if I said the inverse sign of So you're saying take the square root of 3 over 2 and see what the decimal is? Yeah. 
let's do that. Square root of six six. Is that equal? Can you give us an idea where point three nine is? Yeah. So we know it's going to be smaller than that. Okay, good. So that means that our angle, like, where, where, what angle has a sine of square root of two? Yeah. 60 degrees. So it's going to be less than 60 degrees. Yeah. I agree. It is less than 60 degrees. So it, this 0.39 is not as big as that. Is it? What about square root of 2 over 2? Is it smaller than that? I don't know. You would have to divide it. How about let's go all the way to 1 half. Is 0.39 bigger or smaller than 1 half? Smaller than 1 half. So it's going to be even smaller than yeah, 0.5. So it's going to be even smaller. So it's going to be 30. Somewhere in here. Okay. Uh, I can guess it. Uh, so, when we find this out, we would expect it to be 3 0. Somewhere in there. So, like, not yet, not an actual answer, but like 30. Okay. We can still get an actual answer, but we're really close to answer. It's less than 30, but in our answer, it's like greater than 0. Yeah. Would that really be a for an answer? No, we can get much closer. Any ideas how we can get much closer? The human circle is just a bunch of values that are really commonplace. We use 30, 45, 60, 90, and all those guys all the way down quite a bit. But there are lots of other angles that aren't on the human circle. So we can do like 50, 30, 50, 50. Well, rather than guessing, we can just make up. Like if really this, this unit circle is just a list of a bunch of stuff that we can reference. Like I said, go to 30 degrees, I know the side of the coastline, I know the radius and all that stuff. It's just the most popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the most popular. It's not showing all of them. Right. So there's a ton of other, an infinite number of other angles that we don't know the side of the coastline for off the top of our heads with our units. So we can do the calculator with that. So we just do the inverse sine of 0.39. You see the inverse sine is right above the sine. The inverse sine by pressing the second sign. And you're thinking maybe 15 degrees? Yeah. And 2.95, that's not bad, yes. So we less than 30. So we know it's uh, now it's 15. This is the, so when I said inverse sine of 0.39, I was saying to the calculator, find an angle that has a sign of 0.39. Oh, gotcha. That's the angle right there. So it's less than 30. Almost. More than 15. Yeah, it's almost even. So we'll just go 22.95. So now use the inverse sine function to like solve a problem. Okay. Uh, this is the angle that I want to know. I don't know the other angle. That just gives us a range of how big that angle is in the future of our mind. But the first side there, is there like one very specific information we know about the angle? That would be the first part of the equation. The angle does? Mm -hmm. The sign of the angle is by the equation. So we can say that the angle we're looking for, we're looking for an angle that has a sign. If phrase it that way, we realize that we just have to a sign. Find an angle that has a sine of 5 over 15. That's the angle of sine of 5 over 15. That equals the angle of the
Range from zero to five, five being a hit of zero being. And then I will just be I guess no. Okay. So Let's try another triangle. See what we come up with. Um, try and use the same idea as the last triangle. between this angle and this side and this side without being this side. Yeah. And the cosine. The same idea. The cosine of theta equals 3 over 9. So theta equals Same as this previous problem, we're using the sine of 5 plus 15 because the output has 5 and the hypotenuse is 13. Same idea is going to work for the cosine. There's cosine. There's cosine. Yes, this is one I wanted to introduce. I want you guys to think about all the ideas of this. 
Uh, Daniel said we could use the diagram here to find this side and then use the sine of this angle. Okay. How about, what would I be finding if I did a sine of, of say, x equals 3 over 9? That would be this guy. I mean, what's x representing right here? Is it, it's a, we're taking the sign of it and getting three nines. What angle? Angle over there. Yeah. Well, sorry. This one? Yeah. Is the sign of this angle three over nine? No. Yeah, you're taking it. Is the sign of some angle three over nine? The sign of three over nine. The other angle, this guy is down here. That has a sign of 3 over 9. So there's another one. You could say that's x, the sine of x is 3 over 9, the inverse sine of 3 9 is 3 over 9. That would be that angle is 0.9 over 9. That would be the same thing as 7.53. Yeah. Well, of course, yeah, we, that definitely needs to be the one answer. Right? And the answer is correct. How about this triangle? Calculator says so 0.67, right? Yeah. And if I do inverse, so you did inverse tangent of 4 fifths, yeah. and you got 0.67, and I got 38.6. What's going on? Yeah, I know that there's two nodes here, and what it's telling us is an angle that it needs to know in what unit you want this angle. Do you want the angle in radians or do you want the angle in degrees? Well, you got to tell it. So you want to make sure you're going to degrees and degree radians if you want radians. Ah, that makes more sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, that's say the inverse cosine of um, negative root 2 root 2. back to the beginning, just tell me what's the inverse cosine of negative root 2. Uh,
can? Yeah. Anybody else give me the other angle? So we have, the, we have that same problem again, where we're getting multiple outputs, so we have to decide which output is it. Which output will be the output for inverse cosine of the group, the negative group of the group? 30 doesn't have the cosine of the group. It's the cosine of the positive group. 150? Yeah. 150? It's, it's really an opinion thing. Yeah. I was just thinking, like, uh, uh, what you're doing with the shaded thing. Yeah, with right. shaded, uh, I was thinking that maybe it could be 30 degrees. Except for 30 degrees, it doesn't have, it has a positive degree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you look at the channel that it has negative 3 over 2, not negative 3 over 2. What do you think? Okay, so yeah, 150 is going to be it. Why? Because, I don't know, if you surveyed a thousand mathematicians, they would probably be 150 rather than 200. But there had to be just one answer. There's, as far as I can tell, there's not really any other reason. We needed to have only one output, otherwise it's not a function, and 150 is smaller. It's smaller than there's a exactly the reason why, but I certainly like know. So, over here, maybe like that's one of the shading areas. Is that, what kind of cosines do we get over there? Negative. Get your negative cosines over there, right? So, I'll get all my answers for like inverse cosine of negative one half, inverse cosine of negative root 2 over 2 is equal to the inverse cosine of negative point three four six three nine. All of those guys, all those negative cosines, all those outputs are going to come from quadrant 2, from 90 to 1. Okay, now where am I going to get this? The inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2. Lots of angles that have that cosine. What are we going to choose over there? Uh, one, go to one. Okay. What angles can you find in here for the half of the sine of the two? 25. Any others? 15. And then all those perturbal angles, and you want to have a circle. So what you, what's your choice? What's going to be the one answer for this? 45. 45. No sense. You like the range of 0 to 90 or the range of 0 to 90. So let's use those. Oh, so, um, when you find an answer that has like, uh, when you have something that has two answers or three answers, you take the lowest one? Not always just the lowest one, but now like we've set it up so that all of the outputs for the cosine function will come from 0 to 80. Okay. There's not so much a rule like that. This is more likely. Uh, I don't want to say it's exactly that, but I want to say that. Well, that's, that's just kind of a, a tricky rule. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the rule. I, I, yeah, it's from fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we have to keep in mind that this is where our outputs are going to come from. Because we just say always take the smaller one. Like, what if the two angles that we have found? Like neither one of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll, they'll work in front of you. This is just what we have to keep in mind. Our positive cosines are going to be over here. So all the angles that have positive cosines are going to be from 0 to 90. All the negative cosines, the angles that have negative cosines, are going to be from 90 to 180. So all of our angles, all the angles we need to be able to get outputs for anything we put into the function, it's like inverse cosine function. 0, 180. How about the inverse cosine of negative 5?
ratio to the limit. This is, uh, think about the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So that's even, be, let's say it's just going to be positive 5. Here's one way. Uh, uh, adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse to be 5. Hypotenuse has to be 1. The hypotenuse has to be smaller than, well, hypotenuse has to be smaller than anything. Side. There's no way we can get this side to be five times bigger than this side. Right? You know what I'm saying? There's no way for uh, an angle to have a cosine of five. And you know, for it to be negative five, I'd have to make that negative, which would be a little weird in a triangle, but certainly you can say that. It's just not going to work. There's not going to be any angle that has a cosine of negative five. It's the same as the sine. Way over here, this 180 has a cosine of what? Cosine of 180. Mm -hmm. Negative 1. What's the cosine of 0? Mm -hmm. 1. So, in this function, y equals the inverse cosine of x. I guess we should be paying that in this one. Okay, cosine of x. x is going to be between negative 1 and 1. It makes sense that it's going to be bigger than 1. There's no way to have to be bigger than 1. So, that make sense? Try to enter it in your calculator. It's an error. It's not going to work. Um, and the last one, we got sine and cosine. And the last one is the inverse sine. Okay. Find your inner circle. Are we going to see anything? All the stuff we know on the new circle? Y over x, sine over cosine. So, when do we take sine divided by cosine or y divided by x? We should get one. What is that? What do you want to do? Okay, but again, it also happens at negative cosine. It also happens, uh, or not negative cosine, it also, well, where else? You tell me where else do you get a, a tangent of 1? Because there, that's where we got positive one, and we take a negative side of a negative. Negative side of a negative. And which one sounds better? What's that? Which one sounds better? Yeah, which one sounds better? We want our answer to be 45 or 220. 45. 45. So we're going to take quadrant one. What kind of tangents do we get in quadrant one? Positive. Positive. Positive divided by positive positive five, sine divided by positive cosine, positive y divided by positive x. So where are we going to find negative our negative tangent? Yeah. At one thirty-five? Over here? So like the inverse tangent. I'll show you why it's better. Meaning the same as the inverse sine. At the same range as the inverse sine. The angles are going to come between uh, negative 90 and positive 90. So the question is why negative 90 and positive 90 instead of 0 and 180? What do you mean positive and positive and negative angles? Yeah. Like when you said before, so I don't want to be discussing why it can be just the top one and then you want know, that one down below. So you oh, but don't you get negative tangents over here too? You could, but you can also get positive. No, all these are going to be sine over cosine, right? And all of these are positive y and negative x. So all these will have a positive value by negative, which will be negative. So I'll have negative 
we'll, we'll also get negative tangents here because we have positive x and negative y. Why this one or that one? Uh, what is the tangent of 90 degrees? If we chose this quadrant as well, like instead of this one, we chose these two. Let's think about 90 degrees. What's the tangent of 90 degrees? one by zero and get like an answer, then if we took that, so like, okay, so there's some number out there that is one over zero. I can show you that one equals two, and one equals five, and one equals anything you want. You can make anything equal to anything else if one over zero was something. Okay. So at least one problem is divided by zero. If we could divide by zero, all of math would be okay. So, can't divide by zero, that's no good. So, we don't use that one because smack in the middle of all of these outputs is this thing that will never be an output. That 90 will never be an output because there is nothing that you could put into the inverse tangent to get 90. Like there's no number that exists. Right? You'd have to be able to put 1 over 0 in there. You can't do that. So that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Well, remember we're trying to pick the range of angles that we'll use as our answers. For the and 90 will never be an answer. So right in the middle of all the answers that we get, some people never get as an answer. It's kind of weird. Okay. It's not immediately obvious. But now that we think about it, 90 doesn't have a tangent. So there's no way to get 90 out of this function. And 90 is right in the middle between 0 and 80. So that's kind of a fun thing to have happen. Also, what's the tangent of 0 degrees? So then, what am I saying about the inverse tangent? The inverse tangent of zero, zero degrees. Okay. But what's the what's the what is the tangent of 180 degrees? Zero or negative one, which is also zero. Okay. So we kind of with that range, we get this double output problem. If we were to go from 0 to 180 rather than negative 90 to 90, we would get the inverse tangent of 0. What do we choose? 0 or 180? We just have to like leave one of them out. No, no, no. no. Go with 0. Go with 0? Well, so that we just don't even run into that problem, instead of going from 0 to 180, we go from negative 90 to 90. So we get this nice continuous set of outputs. And there's no hole in the middle at 90, and we don't have to choose between 0 and 180. Uh, yeah, I, for a lot of reasons, it's a lot easier. Which I guess I should kind of on these other ones. And that. And for the inverse sign, also, be equal to negative 90 or positive 90. But for the tangent, inverse tangent, that's not the case. For inverse tangent, you can't. All you do is that uh, at least find the angle, all the angles on the side. That's really what we're trying to If you want to find another side, you have to find the angle. Okay. 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 Figure out both of the angles inside the triangle are other than the other. Okay. Okay. Okay.
find this angle? Sign of this angle is 3 over 7. You're right. I don't think I got this one. I think I did that. Yeah, yeah. 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 sign of 30 
where is the sign? No, I'm just gonna just say a little something that, but it's, it's, yeah, it's not. That's where we have this like this unfortunate notation thing. In math, sometimes we use the same symbol to mean two different things, like I, and I. Sometimes I is for negative one. Sometimes I is like we're talking about series and sequences. We have that little I index, right? The same letters, the same notation we use for different things. Only so many symbols we have to use. Okay. So sine to the negative one here means the inverse, which means give this function a sine. This function, which we did an angle to, and it gives you the sign. Yeah, you're taking, yeah, you're taking an angle of sign and then trying to find the uh, yeah, sign. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. A little sound weird, but yeah. So this is 25.38, which means this is. calculators and ask the inverse tangent. The okay. Because remember these these trig functions are ratios of sides of triangles. You can at least think of it in that way. So what ratio is the tangent? Side over cosine or like in a triangle what would it be? Because in a triangle what would it be? This side or with that side, is it possible to get three? What what could this side be? Nine and three. Is that a believable triangle? Right angle? And three, nine? Yeah. Three, nine. Yeah. Three, nine, 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 one time is too big. And that's fine. The, the reason that we couldn't get inverse sines of five or inverse cosines of five, so if we try to take the inverse cosine of five, we're saying it's fine that angle has a cosine of five. Try and do that with a triangle. Adjacent over hypotenuse has to be five. That means like this would have to be twenty-five. And this would be five. The hypotenuse is shorter than one of the legs. That doesn't work. That's why inverse cosine of five or negative five or whatever doesn't work. Doesn't compute. So when it's cosine, uh, it's impossible. So inverse cosine bigger than one or smaller than negative one. But what tangent? How big of a tangent can you have? Infinite? Maybe you have infinite Yeah, this side could be... Maybe 81. 81. 81. And then 9. And 9. 81 divided by 9. Is 9. So now we have a tangent of 9. How about if I make this 1? Then we have a tangent of 81 over 1. And then 81. But if we make it 1 there, and anything we want. 10,000. Is that a believable triangle? Yeah. It's a skinny triangle, not a very useful triangle. <laughs> yeah. it, could, could this side be 10,000 and this side is 1? I mean, it doesn't look the scale or anything. But this side is, it could be 10,000 and this side could be 1. And the end of that angle would be 10,000 yeah. So for the inverse tangent, x can be. X can be any. So be infinite, X equal to the same number. They are the same now. Put it down. All real numbers. All real numbers. That's pretty much what you mean by saying X is infinite. Yeah. You can put like E in. Sure, you can. 
good. Uh, e, you can't put I, because I is not for yeah. I. But pi and, and, and E and. And they're all real numbers, but like I is yeah. uh, imaginary. Yeah. It's not real. Yeah. yeah. So. So we want to be able to evaluate inverse tree functions and define those percentages. We also want to be able to solve triangles, find the angles and sides and all that kind of stuff using inverse tree functions. And then what other things that we want to be able to do? Which is optimal if we want to do algebra, which is solving the set up an equation and solve for the, the unknown. And now we're going to solve the unknown using not divided by three, not add five equal sides, not exclude both sides, not exclude both sides, but So sine theta equals mm, I. So the same idea was here as for 5x equals 12. How are you going to get x by some? Got to multiply by 5. Divide by 5. OK, it's all correct. How about uh, x squared equals 12? I don't have to know what x is, but how do you find that? Times square equals size, square 12. That's what x is going to be, which is 2 and 3. Okay. That's that. So we're always like undoing whatever uh, you've done that. Perfect. So how are we going to cancel out the sign? I think so, because it looks like it's multiplied by the theta. Have we ever taken these three letters and multiply them, but uh, none of the sides of both of these are multiplying it. We should have to do it. What is the inverse of What's the inverse of sine? Uh, that's very simple. The inverse of sine is just the inverse of sine. So this is like the inverse square. This is like the inverse multiplication. And so we're going to do the inverse of sine. Take the inverse of sine of the sine. Let's think about that. We're going to take the inverse sine again. So the sine of theta is something, right? All angles have a sine. So we find out what the sine of theta is. And then we take the inverse sine of that. Well, that's just going to give us an angle. It's going to give us an angle that has that sine. So it's going to give us theta again. Yeah. Let's try it. Sine of 30. Let's take the inverse sine of that. What's the sine of 30? Okay, so this is a half. Alright, so now we're taking the inverse sine of a half. What's the inverse sine of a half? with this, but uh, not there is an issue with that. But, but for the purposes of this problem, let's just take the inverse sine of both sides. we do the same thing on both sides. We're looking for an angle, an angle that has a sine of 5 a, so we'll take the inverse sine of 5 a. What's theta? Equation. The original equation just said uh, the sine of some angle is 5 eighths. Is there only one angle that has a sine of 5 eighths? No. no. So this, this theta here could be lots of different things. Okay. Kind of like when we looked at x squared equals 9. 
Is there only one number that you can square and get nine? How many numbers can you square and get nine? Oh, three, and top three, three, and many. So this has the same kind of problem, that actually this doesn't just have two solutions. Have so the way that's going to uh, work out for us is we need to know which solution are we looking for. Where on the circle is the angle? So if this problem said, find the, uh, the angle has a sine of 5 eighths, and by the way, uh, this angle is between 0 and 90. Then, well, look at that. The thing that the calculator told us, of course, if you think 0 and 90, that's the answer that it's programmed to give you. But, what if, and this will happen, once the problem starts out and says, find an angle that has a sine of 5 uh, five eighths, but the angle is somewhere between 90 and have a way of, of getting at this answer without using your calculator and saying can you sign a five eight. But no matter what you do, no matter how you enter it, it's always going to tell you 38 and three. Can you just add 90? Let's draw a picture and let's see if, if that works. So it gives 38.68, so that's somewhere in here. So we just add 90. Okay, so 90 plus 38.68. Does that have the same sign as this angle? No. It doesn't. The angle has the same sign would be straight across from it. It would be this angle right here. So minus one eight? Yeah. yeah. What's that? Do yeah. you take away one eight? Take away one eight? I think I'll say yes, but but also realize what you just said yeah. is a negative number. Okay. <laughs> so what are we really gonna do? Yeah. Drop our angle that we got yeah. from one eight. Watch out for now that there are more complicated ways to give these answers. If it doesn't specify that it's between 90 and 180, then you're gonna have to like somehow get all of the infinite answers to the angles that could have a sign of 5 eighths. But we won't worry about that right now. We have to do. I just want to mention this real quick. You kind of already saw it, but you know, what if I Put 150 instead of 30. Well, the same thing will happen. What's the sign of 150? Yeah. A half. Okay, well, there it is, a half. It's the same thing. But what happens when I take the inverse sign of a half? No, let's see this with a different problem. So the, the inverse sign of one half is. The point I'm making here is that when you take the inverse sign of the sign, you don't strictly get an undo or a cancel out. Right? It's, you're figuring out what's the sign of this angle and then which angle has that sign, and then that makes it all the way through. That's why we need to figure out. So you're, uh, you're trying to cancel out, but you're really not? Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's not kind of like this. Like to get the square root. Well, if I take the square root of x squared, I get x, but I kind of get like plus yeah, or yeah. minus x. So you kind of find an answer that has multiple answers. Yeah. So we just have to keep that in mind. It does undo it. There is a there is a, an inverse property to them. They do undo each other to a certain extent. The only thing that we have to keep in mind is, just, you know, pay attention to what it's saying. Is the angle between 90 and 180? Then you got some more work. Right? Okay. Um, now we're going to do like the first little 
example, uh, kind of a, a problem that we see frequently time. So if I showed you a, a triangle like this, and so this is 37 degrees, and this is 43 degrees. And that this was uh, second. Everyone saw this time. What were you trying to solve the angle? Everything. I don't know everything about this time. Okay. Watch. Are you going to give the altitude and watch it? Yeah, it'll just be the 15.4 packet and. Uh, Okay, which one's the hypothesis? Yeah. What's that? There's not one? Why do you say that? Okay, there is something important about what you just said, but a hypotenuse is just a long side. Yeah. So it still has a hypotenuse, but the fact that it's not a right triangle is important. So let me go back to these. So if we 37 degrees, and we said this is the hypotenuse. I'd be tempted to say the sine of 37, 37 degrees is 7 over something. Okay? Oh, what Jake just uh, brought up is that it's not a right triangle. So that only works for right triangle. Opposite of right hypotenuse is the sine, that's only for right triangle. So this is what we call a non right triangle. And that just doesn't work. So we have this new thing that I'm about to tell you. It's called <coughs> the law of sides. So if your if your triangle is not a right triangle, then you can't use the standard. Like everything's out. Really. You can't use opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. And all that stuff is out. The Pythagorean theorem out. Okay. All those things that are for specifically right triangles don't work anymore. But in this situation particular kind of situation, which is uh, the situation where it is an angle, angle, side kind of situation. Because we give you an angle, and the next thing, like if you go around the circle, is another angle, and the last thing is a side. Okay? As opposed to an angle, side angle, which would be angle that's side between the two angles. The angle, side angle. angle, angle, side. So here's what we would use. The sign of Capital A over A to the sine of B over B is also equal to the sine of C. Now that's not to say you have to use two A. It's just that any of these can be equal to the B of So it's a bit of a dynamic term which kind of switched around a little bit. Combining A and B in any way, I'm saying the sine of A over A equals the sine of B. So let me show you. So here's one thing. There's going to be three angles, A, B, and C, and three sides, A, B, and C. Now C is the name we give to this angle and the hypotenuse. So this one will be C, and this will be big C, and then A and B because I can just put the triangle on that. So let's call this one A. And this would be little a, big, you know, capital letters are for angles and small letters are for sides. That would make this b and this little b. So I can solve for either little b or the whole c. Let's solve for little b. So 
cosine of 50 sine of 50 49 over um, Okay, well, when we have this b in the denominator, what are we going to do about that? Cross multiply? We do cross multiply. We would get the um, sine of 37 times b equals 7 times the sine of 49. And then how would we get b by itself? Sine 37 is just some number that's being multiplied by b. So we multiply both sides by that. So I'm going to get b. That's b. Okay. So I'm going to grab the calculator and work it out. We'll know what b is. Line. So I'm just going to draw an arrow over here to make you do the, the work. Okay. Now what do we do? Now we know what uh, a is. We know what b is. How are we going to find c? Yeah, do the same thing. Uh, I like to do not say that the diagram here. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, so we could go sine of 94 over c, but then we have a c in the denominator again. We could cross and multiply and divide. But you know what we could do? Since it's one fraction equal to another fraction, if I flip the fractions over, both of them, then it's still equal. So I can do c over the sine of c. Equals, I'm going to use these again because this B here is going to be some decimal that I possibly need. So I'm going to do uh, 7 over the sine of 37. And now we'll multiply the sine of 34. Pretty good. Multiply the sine of 94 on both sides, and that's the C. Angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle. Those are the only ones I'm going to give you. Nothing tricky. Nothing weird is going to happen to you. Okay? It'll all work out all right. Um, just find that, that third angle. Basically, I'm going to do two angles on the side. Let's just do this first couple of areas. And uh, you just need to find that other angle. Use that angle. Figure out uh, one of the sides. You know, the other side. Um, as always, let me know if I have any trouble, but here we have, first at 13.4, and then I'll get to 13.5, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. You don't have to do all of 13.5, just some of it. I'm going to do J. Uh, okay. Just that right there. This is like that first page. Mm -hmm. the, the left side. Of yep, that's it. Page. Just the, the left side of the first page. That's where you'll see either angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, side. And you'll see 